Hello, my name is Lynn Plord, and I'm a kids' book author who lives in Maine. And I would like to share with you today some learning activities, ideas, based on my book, Happy Birthday, Maine, because it is Maine's bicentennial. We'll talk about that word in a second, in the year 2020. I am dressed like Paul Bunyan, and I have my moose antlers, because Paul Bunyan and Moose throw Maine a birthday party for her special celebration. I'm going to take off my antlers because they flop and they're very distracting to me and maybe to you. And I promise that a little bit later on, I am going to show and share a real moose antler with you. You can find a video read aloud of this book. Downey's Books gave me permission to read it aloud and to share it. So you will be able to check that book out. Also, I will tell you where you can find learning activities for this book. If you go to my website, just put in my name, lynnplord.com, and you look for the Happy Birthday main page on my, I have all my books listed there, you will find some activities. And there's several different activities, like there's a coloring page you can do, and there's a word search you can do, and there is a maze. But there's also one set of activities has ideas you can try, and then there's links to things where you can check out information about the different kinds of main flags or Maine songs we've had through history or wildlife in Maine that's disappeared over the last 200 years. So lynnplord.com and look for the Happy Birthday Maine book. All right, let's start by talking about this word, bicentennial. It's a long word, bicentennial. And when you are looking at longer words that you may not know the meaning of, it helps to break them into parts. So if we look at by which is a prefix, let me find a, prefix, and pre means before, and fix is the fixed part of the word. So the prefix in bicentennial is by, and if you think of other words you know, like bicycle, instead of tricycle, or you think of Bifocal. Do you know anybody who wears bifocals? So bicycle, bifocal, bicentennial. We're going to break. We have to find out what bi means. You probably already figured out it means two because a bicycle has two wheels. And bifocals have um, two parts of glasses where people can see. They can see far distance and they can see close. Centennial, if we look at the word cent, and um, cent, like how many cents in a dollar? There are a hundred. So bicentennial would be like 200. So bicentennial means means 200th birthday. I challenge you to find some more long words and see if you can break them into parts with prefixes and suffixes. That would be uh, a challenge to do. One of the challenges I have for you is, because it's Maine's bicentennial, it's 200th year, can you make a list of 200, 200 things that Maine is famous for? That's only here in Maine. And if we back up a little before you do that, you could do as a class or you could do as a family. Can you count to 200 by twos? Could you count to 200 by tens, by 25s? Try counting as many ways as you can to 200. All right. If you're going to make a list of main things, you have to make sure that they are really specific for our state of Maine. And a Maine map may help you. I visited a class and they started a good list where they said a Maine Coon Cat and a Chickadee, a Lobster. And if you look through Happy Birthday Maine, you will find lots of Maine references in the book. So that'll give you a start to your list, but 200 is a lot. So if you start thinking in grouping, so you could think of Maine towns or Maine bodies of water or Maine animals. Make sure it is specific to Maine. For example, another class, one of the things we put a question mark by on our list was loons. 
And I know we do have loons here in Maine, but I'm not sure if we have more loons in Maine than most states do. So that's why I did a question mark. I know we're famous for our lobster and we're the pine tree state and Bar Harbor is one of our towns, but make sure it's specific to Maine. All right. I would like to talk you through now a research project you could do based on Maine. I have a two-page handout, and again, you'll be able to find that on my website. So what you do is you start with your topic. Well, if you go back to the list that was brainstormed, there's only 10 here, but if you did 200, choose a topic that you could research. And then it says, number one, make a list of what you already know about your topic. And then on the other side, then make questions that you have about your topic. So start with what you already know. An example, again, with a class of students I visited with, we they said Moosehead Lake, and Moosehead Lake is specific to Maine. So in terms of making a list of what you already know, we, as a group taught, it is Maine's biggest lake. We know that. It does have beautiful scenery there. We know that Mount Kineo Somebody in this group ha had a camp there. So they said they can see Mount Kineo and they can see Katahdin from Moosehead Lake, where their camp is. And we know it's near what town? It's near Greenville. So that's what we know. So start with what you know and make a list. And then what you do is you can make a list of questions. So for Moosehead Lake, questions we came up were, with were, how deep is it? And we already said it was the biggest. I would wonder, it's like, what is the size? How many miles is it across and how many miles wide and how deep what animals are by there somebody said i wonder where it's got its name i think that's a good question is it because of the moose that are near it is it because of the shape of the lake and then somebody wondered about how hot or cold it is does it run hotter or colder than other lakes when is the average ice out I'm sure you can think of many more questions about Moosehead Lake, but you get the idea. So you start with what you know, and then you ask questions. And another example of one where a, a class of students I worked with is we talked about Don Fendler. And they started with what they know, that Don Fendler got lost on Mount Katahdin. And he was lost for nine days. We talked about it was only one day he was on the mountain, and he was 12 years old. The questions people asked is, how was he found? Was he found in the same place where he was lost? How long did Don Fender live? When did Don get lost on Mount Katahdin? How did he get food? How did he survive? Where did he sleep? So many good questions. So again, start with what you know, and then go ahead and come up with questions for what you want to find answers to. And then on my handout, you can talk about, or fill in, the second page of the handout is number three. Where can you find answers to your questions? So think about where you could find answers, where you could do your research. You could start searching online. You could read books. You could do magazines. And then the last question is, how could you share what you've learned about your topic? Maybe you could do a report or a speech, or maybe you could do a podcast. Maybe you could create a comic. So think about how you could share your information. I want to share with you a few main topics that I'm curious about, and I've done just a little bit of research, and it shows you how you could go about doing research. So one of them is moose. And I'm curious because I was giving this when I went to Jackman, Maine for a school visit a few years ago at their Night of Stars event. And at their Night of Stars event, they gave me one of these and they carved into it. And it's a moose antler. And what I know is I know that moose lose, lose their antlers before wintertime. And I also know they shed them and they grow them back the next year. I also know that if you count the points, you can tell how old a deer is. And they get an extra point each year that older that they are. So that is one thing that I know that I think is interesting. So I could put that on my what I already know for moose, but I wanted to research and I wanted to know a little bit more. And so a few of the things that I found, and you want to check your sources, like here's moose information I found, and it was from the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife in Maine. Do you think that's a source that I can trust? 
Yes, I believe that definitely the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife is a source that I can trust. And um, they have information here that I hadn't known before. They talked about that moose can move each ear independently. They can move each eye independently. That's amazing. Also, that if they have an injury and poor nutrition, their antlers can be deformed. I didn't know that. One thing I found interesting is that lactating cows, which means mama cows or mama moose are called cows. When they're lactating, it means they're giving milk to their babies. So they're nursing their babies. They have the highest eating needs of any moose, and they eat 66 pounds of brouse. And I was like, well, what is brouse? I hadn't heard that word before when it came to what moose eat. I would look at it and say, oh, you browse, you browse something. But brouse, that is what, um, and they say it later on, that is what moose eat. It says brouse are the leaves and twigs, woody plants that moose eat. So a nursing mama moose will eat 66 pounds of brouse in one day. That's amazing. That's a fascinating fact to me. And I heard somebody who knew more about moose than I did when I was sharing information with them and asking, we were asking questions. They said that moose antlers are made out of bone. So that's interesting. The material they're made out of is bone. But cows or bulls that have horns, those are made out of fingernail material. I love all those fascinating facts. All right. Something else I might want to research and know more about because I think they're beautiful. I wonder if you think you know what this is. This is a Maine blueberry barren. And we know blueberries, wild blueberries in Maine, and we're famous for our blueberries in Maine. They grow and they're in fields where you can rake up the blueberries and get them when it's peak season, usually in August. But this is what the fields look like in the fall. They change colors just like fall trees do. So blueberries fascinate me. And so then I was finding articles about the blueberry harvest. And so where do we rate for blueberries? Are we the state that grows the most wild blueberries? How many pounds in a year do we grow? Um, is it Maine's biggest industry? Or where does it fall? Is it before or after lobstering or before or after potatoes? So there's so many questions I would have about blueberries and want to learn about those. One other topic that fascinates me, and I've got some things here I could use to learn more, is Abby Burgess. Abby Burgess was a real person, and I happen to have some books about her. And what I know, if I start with what I know, is I know she was a real person, even though some of these are fictional picture books. She was a real person, and she was on Matinicus Rock, near Matinicus Island. And it was back, I think, in like the 1800s. But I'll have to check that out. I don't know. So that's a question I have to answer. But what happened is there was a bad storm. And at the lighthouse where they were, they were growing low on supplies. So Abby's father wanted to get to shore to get supplies because Abby's mother was sick. And he went to shore to get supplies and the storm got worse. Before he left, he taught his daughter how to keep the light burning in the lighthouse so it would be safe for people out in the Atlantic Ocean. And so she ended up being a lighthouse hero. So that's what I know about her. But boy, I'd like to know more. When did it actually happen? How long was her dad gone? Uh, how did she keep the lights burning? Were they, I think they probably were not electric lights back then. Did she have to light them and keep them going? Uh, how bad did the storm go? Did Were there any shipwrecks during that time? So those are all interesting things that I would like to check out. All right, you guys know how to research, do a research project and celebrate Maine. And if your class, everybody did a different project, maybe you could have some sort of Maine fair. And you may be sharing it virtually because of how things are. But 
you could share your projects virtually too, which would be really fun. So happy birthday to Maine and have fun researching and learning about Maine, everybody.